Time now for our weekly news segment. Hey, everybody. Right. Hey, Tony. How's it going? We can. Good, guys. It's a really exciting time. Oh, my God. Yeah, um, that, I mean that, that is the, that is the news. That's that's the big news, guys. Is, <laughs> we just had that whole session was the big news. Uh, yeah, sorry, it kind of overshadows the new segment. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's uh, crazy. Yeah, Monero is just going to be on steroids, and I'm really really excited for it. Um, all right, let me share my screen. You got Frank saying, "Love the discussion, Tay. I will commit to the next round of funding." Yeah, for sure, man. Everybody should be committing uh, some amount. Just be part of history. Uh, be as generous as you can, but even if it's just a little bit. All right, let's get into the new section. The first thing, Google has recently started indexing Bitcoin data into their search engine. Last time we talked about Ethereum doing it. Now I guess Bitcoin is doing it. Bitcoin Magazine is regarding this as a huge development. And um, if you actually try to put in to do it that way, but for Monero, it's just going to come up with an image saying it's not of your business. <laughs> Nothing is going to happen because that's how it should be. And um, this is absolutely insane. And we discussed it We discussed it in the past, so we're not going to um, discuss it much further, but it's just, yeah. It's really funny. I'm kind of glad they're doing this because it, it'll like bring to people to make them like realize further that, hey, like this is actually, this is just public information. Like, like what's so uh, how uh how deep does this go on is it just that you can search addresses or it's like they're associating some wallets with it just uh, gives you the balance right there it's yeah, okay. it gives you the balance. yeah. just All by right. typing in some bitcoin address right but they're not starting to associate wallets with known entities and things are they Ooh, i mean i thought about it but i that'll be the next stepping stone the next huge development i guess i mean that's what uh you know I mean, that's chain analysis. Chain analysis. Like, are, are, are they publishing yeah. chain analysis data at this point? I Not mean, yet. that's 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 going to that is that's reality, guys. That's happening at some point. Uh, that's what this will lead to. I remember I proposed that on a Reddit thing, like way back in the day. Just like I was like, somebody should build a, a like a public tool to, sh to show people how traceable, uh, you know, Bitcoin is. Obviously, a block explorer. Google's but, doing I mean, it for this, you. This, this is it. This is it. This is the implementation of it. So this is. Silver lining here is major wake up call to people. Be like, oh, wait, what? Bitcoin is that traceable? Um, yep. And hopefully, this pushes more people into understanding that and finding their way to Monero. I mean, even that's pretty bad being able to just see your balance. I don't want anyone to see my bank balance. That's crazy. Oh, yeah. It's just so concerning how people say, yeah, but I have nothing to hide. Okay. And then I think the best argument is we're just going to make the walls in your house transparent. You got nothing to hide. They're probably gonna say, "Whoa, okay, that's that's too much." Well, yeah, nobody should see your balance. Why? Well, like even small stuff, like say that you want to make a surprise for your girlfriend or your mother, or you want to buy some surprise trip, you know, and then they can just see that. It's just like you, you want some level of privacy. Um, yeah, but it's insane, and you can already do this. Like you could have already done this before, gone I think blockchain.com or whatever, and then look up the address. But this is just making it easier, essentially. The fact that I can just go on Google and do it. Um, Silent payments would avoid some of that issue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it, it, I'm not sure. Like, it's going to be interesting if one day they're going to actually tie that address. To, well, what if you can actually type in Bitcoin and then Tony or Bitcoin talks, you know, uh, Doug, and then you kind of see the balance. Like, you don't even have to type the whole thing. That'll be quite, quite crazy. But we'll see. Uh, now, this this is actually really huge. So let's discuss send anonymous Monero donations to any charity or nonprofit in the world. Essentially, what they're doing is that uh, pick a charity that you'd like to donate to. They're going to, the Monero you send goes into their international charitable fund. They're going to, if that charity accepts Monero, they're going to send the Monero to that charity for you. If they don't, they're going to send fiat to that uh, nonprofit organization, charity, uh, whoever you want to donate to. And um, all the while maintaining your privacy, nobody knows who really donated that um, amount uh, to the charity or nonprofit. Um, but this is really important. And really that's cool. a, that's really awesome. That's it's that's amazing. amazing. I mean, this is like the perfect use case for people to start to see Monero being associated with. Obviously, Kuno does that, uh, but now this company is. If I don't, I don't know nothing about them. Is this company already popular for 
offering this ability to send donations anonymously and now they just added Monero as an option or have they i don't know how large they are or whatever i've only heard of them a couple of days ago um yes i'm not sure actually Very cool. Well, but it's really cool um yeah. It's just a beautiful showcase of the use case, power of Monero, used used for good, right? And it takes us back to Canada and what happened to Canada and people getting their uh, bank accounts frozen and stuff like that because they could identify the person who donated through truckers. I, I'm in Montreal right now and I just feel like it. Is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, go, yeah. To the, go to the I, Donate I, Now page. Click on that I, and then I click. came up here. I haven't gotten a good good sense of the place yet, but I, I'm looking forward to walking around the city. Click the and... one on the right, the pink one. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then if you you scroll down a little bit, um, yeah. donate via Monero. Very cool. Very cool. On the bottom yeah. right. Yep. Have you been to Canada before? Or this is your first time, Doug. It's my first time in Canada. Oh really? Oh wow. Yeah, which is crazy. I mean, I've been all around the world, and I never just drove six hours north to go to Canada. Oh, you it's drove beautiful. there. Oh, yeah, nice. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Any uh, Monero acceptors? I saw that uh, that little video you posted. Dude, yeah, we got to play that room. video. Yeah, play that video. Wait, Tony, pull that up real quick on Twitter. Yeah. Pull up my Twitter. No. Um, that that that's news for sure. I thought that was great. So yeah, I, I forget. I don't even know where this is. It was uh, you know off the off the main highway. Right. So I guess about. Three hours south of Montreal in New York, we stopped at a. Oh, that was it. Go back up. Go that, back was up. It? that was the video. Okay. Yep, that was it. Yeah, yeah play this. All right. All right, guys. It's been a bizarre day. Two earthquakes in New York. Now we're on the road, headed to the total solar eclipse zone. And look what I found in the rest stop. I the found way. it. <laughs> I'm with, I'm with. Wow. In... We did not put that there. <laughs> That's so cool. I thought that was great. Yeah, that that wasn't us. Uh, so that was that was that was just a nice some random surprise. rest stop. Yeah, just some random rest stop on your way up to from New York City to Montreal. It was like a small little gas station. It looked it looked pretty fresh. The sticker. It's a good one. That that's I haven't seen that one around in a while. That sticker, but uh, yeah. yeah, there it is. Well, wait. So you left New York and then I've heard about the earthquakes. So you left and then two of them happened after, or no? I was there. there. I was there for the yeah. earthquakes, and then we were driving for the second one. Second one we didn't feel. First one we felt like wow. We were um, but yeah, but yeah, that was like a, a nice little surprise. I feel like it knew that Monero was heading to Canada, so the ground was shaking. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if something's calling me up here, guys. I don't know what it is. <laughs> some, some force is telling me wow. I need to be up here. <laughs> that, that's amazing. Yeah, and it looks fresh, too. That's really cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's amazing. So, guys, people that put the stickers, keep keep doing it. You know, it's, it's, it has an impact when you start doing the branding. Like in New York and Brooklyn, I see a lot of uh, – I was seeing a lot of, like – Back in the day, I'd, I'd start to see like a lot of ETH stuff. That was like one of the first ones I saw everywhere. Um, you do see Monero, Monero stickers around in, in New York for sure too. But I think that I think the more the merrier. I like that. And they're not expensive to to buy. Like yeah, yeah. You know, I bought some and I just stuck them wherever I was in Europe or you know. Yeah. So if you're in, if you're in Greece, actually, you might see some because <laughs> I stuck a couple. <laughs> um, let's go into the next thing. Um, so let's talk about Millet and going in the exact opposite route expected of a pro Bitcoin a libertarian. And I actually have the article pull up here so we can go into it a little bit. Uh, but we were actually wondering what's going to happen because, um, he got a visit from, um, uh, what was the name of, uh, from financial action task force. Right. And essentially they had to make some changes or if not, there would have been some dark consequences. So. We're all thinking what's going to happen, and uh, yeah, he's, bend, he's, be he's bending the knee. He's doing exactly what a freaking crypto anarchist or uh, you know, anarcho capitalist. I'm sorry, he's not a crypto anarchist. What uh, he should be though, but what an anarcho capitalist is not supposed to do. He's bending his knee 
to the Financial Action Task Force. He doesn't want Argentina to be gray listed by the, you know, uh, the banking system. Um, so this is his moment where he's supposed to give the FU to them and be like, fuck you, no. Uh, I actually have these principles. That's what I'm all literally all about. But no, he's not doing that. And so I don't know. Gombat, I know uh, you're, you're tuning in. If you want to jump up on stage, you could give us some, some insight into, into that as to whether or not there's any justification here as to what, for what he's doing. Like if you can justify it from and still maintain the principles that he claims to have, but I'm not seeing it. This is part of, this is a small part of the reason why we're leaving Argentina. Obviously not because of this, we had a, mm -hmm. a list of other, a list of other reasons, but this kind of was kind of like the, the cherry on the top. I was like, all right, you know what? <laughs> why are we going out of our way to be there? Um, when he's, you know, working against crypto at this point. Mm -hmm. That's my um, I'm kind of happy that it's happening again in Mexico, just because it's easier, like a deep venue. I wasn't there, unfortunately, last year, but uh, everybody had a lot of fun. Yeah, the venue is freaking amazing. And like mm -hmm. we, we, sp we yeah. spoke to uh, the girl who ran the, ran the marketplace last year and the venue, and they're very excited to have us back. So there, it would get rid of so many unknowns and we can just improve instead of kind of start from scratch. Exactly. And it's kind of like a nice goal to make them even happier yeah. this year, like sell even more for Monero, you know? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. it's going to be a great time. Uh, yeah, but this uh, this was interesting. Um, but Yeah, Gambat, jump on if you can. We'll get. I'd love to get your take on this, whether you think I'm being too harsh, but uh, let me know. Yep. Let's go on to the next thing. Let's talk about, uh, so Rocknim actually analyzed the floating Monero uh, transaction that happened in March. And basically he pointed out that the effective ring size has decreased from 16 to 5.5. Now, if you want to read this, um, it's five pages, it gets a bit technical, uh, but it's uh, interesting. And he goes into the black marble theory more so. And uh, I have, where is it? So basically, just to go over what happened, how did Monero do overall? Good, though not perfect. On the positive side, the network never went down. The community immediately reacted and remained vigilant. Dynamic blocks did work. For many Monero users, they had no idea a spam attack even was even occurring. Uh, on the negative side, it turns out the fee mechanism in uh, wallets was not working properly, causing transactions to not auto-adjust their fee to higher levels. This was patched quickly, but it did cause issues in the short term, notably because of slow uh, updates from exchanges because fees weren't out of updating they became stuck in the mempool for as long as an hour of course transactions could be sent with an adjusted higher fee from users manually however this did uh, delay transactions for the thousands of users who didn't then going into the um ring size went from 16 to 5.5 and um it's very interesting if you look at the chart and you go all the way to 2014 and this will be in the network this high high peak which eventually this would become the normal um and i'm uh, i'm gonna be so excited for that um and then hopefully beyond but um yeah, what yeah our, our arctic arctic was talking about that in the yeah. chats this week by the way i recommend people go and read the if you, if you don't already go and read the forums the monero uh research lab especially the past week two weeks it's a tremendous yeah. amount of information that's being discussed there about, you know, the path forward for Monero. Well worth your time to, to read, read up on it. It's good stuff. Uh, but yeah, Arctic's been talking about the fact that, you know, if we do get full membership proofs, well, we will, right? We, we just spoke with Luke. It is happening one way or the other. <laughs> uh, but once we do get it, there's likely, we're likely going to see an uptick in transaction count with that implementation, right? There's going to be a lot of like new attention being brought to Monero. Um, so I think that could be a catalyst, a very real yeah. catalyst for entries in transaction count at that point as well. Yeah, but the most important is just how wonderful the community gets together when these things happen and uh, they, um, we stick together and we analyze it and we write about it and, um, and Monero Health are pretty good. So, and it's going to be on even better beyond what we can think of. Um, so yeah, definitely go back to Arctic's um, doc and then see what he says about it. Cause that was really interesting. 
Um, then I'm not going to go into this because Luke um, discussed this full chain membership proofs plus spend authorization plus linkability. Um, go back and watch Luke. We had him today on the show and he explained this in detail. Um, so go ahead and do that. Let's go on to the next thing. Again, more as part of the effort to implement full chain membership proofs. Cyberstack has put forward a proposal to review generalized bullet proofs. Yep, we just showed that. So you could, so, that's, that's live already. That's uh, for donations. So definitely, definitely donate, guys. And then we'll donate yeah. to, to Luke's once he posts that. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> this one is very unfortunate, but um, just makes up a case. So I did nothing wrong, and my 180,000 is now frozen. I had a MAYC, which I sold, and Binance froze my account when I tried to ramp off. Um, how could I have known the guy used dirty funds, and how is it my responsibility? Uh, but due to the traceability of uh, blockchains, you get associated with uh, people that may use it for nefarious actions, which doesn't happen in, in Monero. And um, that's why Monero is just... You need to have fungibility in a currency, so these things don't happen. But... The guy essentially said in cryptocurrency, I should have used XMR, uh, which if he did, this wouldn't have, uh, have ha happened. So, yeah, it's very unfortunate. And I hope this guy is going to get his funds eventually. But um, I wonder what the process is going to be of, um, they said it could take over six months to clear uh, this guy. So I wonder what the process is going to be, what, what are they going to ask him. I um, hope he's going to get his money back, but definitely... Um, use Monero, guys. Use Monero. Well, to make him feel better, I don't think that's an option uh, with his own situation. Uh, if he sold, if he sold this NFT on Binance, well, Binance, you can't buy Monero anymore, so you mm -hmm. couldn't do a swap on the custodial platform and then withdraw Monero. Unfortunately, that option's no longer there. Yep. This is how you know. Just this is how people are going to learn, right? There's going to be more and more of these instances. Word is going to spread. Yes. People are going to yeah. realize. It's also such, such a huge amount of money. So, guys, please pay attention. Learn from other people's mistakes and don't repeat it yourself. That's also a large amount of money. Yeah, the real lesson here is the, the custodial nature of the exchange. Yeah. yeah. So, be careful. Please don't uh, try using NFTs on Monero. It doesn't work. <laughs> right. Um, now, let's discuss shopping bit. Uh, the usage stats for March 2024, XMR, 56.91%, Bitcoin, 38 Lightning, 2%, and Fiat, 2%. So flipping has... For March, yeah. And, and we just had Shopping Bit on the show, so you're welcome, Shopping Bit. We, we just, uh, <laughs> <laughs> they got the Monero Talk bump. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome to see. Um, I think they will be at MoneroCon this year. Uh, maybe I could try to get them to come to Monerotopia. I know they they are European based, but they're you know it's it's one of the the few um, like crypto e commerce sites that's actually used quite a bit. Uh, mm -hmm. So to see Monero taking over Bitcoin for one of their I mean this is one of the main use cases for for Bitcoin, right? Uh, you know, for su supposed use cases. And now Monero has edged into it. I haven't just, posted on the. This, um, is, this is a dark market. There's people using Monero to, you know, buy everyday things. They're like, why? Why should I be using Bitcoin for this purpose? It doesn't make sense. This hasn't been posted on the the Cake account yet, but for Cake Pay uh, month of March, it's like 85, 90 percent Monero, <laughs> like five to ten percent Bitcoin. Really. Yeah. Well, I guess I guess argu argument can be right. People just wanted to sell their Monero effectively by using it. Um, you know. You well, I mean, we do we do that. take Bitcoin straight up, uh, but most people just use Monero because it's cheaper. And like we even have um, built-in Trocador, uh, but it's, it's mostly just Monero transactions that people do. Very cool, guys. Beautiful. How the, how the flipping is going to happen across all of all these. This, this is winning. This is real number go up. I mean, mm -hmm. coin cards, interestingly mm -hmm. enough, they had they did have a lot higher Bitcoin from last month than Monero transactions. 
Do you know the which percentage? is interesting because insane, not yeah. lightning, regular on-chain Bitcoin, which means people are, you know, spending a lot on fees. Yeah, I think I did see that. That's weird. Um, I don't know what's up with oh, that. Yeah. I want to see that. Right? Um, what, would, what would trigger that? That's... I guess, well, that that was people cashing out on their Bitcoin, perhaps, right? Bitcoin hitting, like, all-time highs. People saying, let me let me cash out. Yeah, possibly. So, possibly. Yeah. Possibly. We do see 41% versus 20%. And usually it was a bit closer than that. Not a such uh, high disparity, but... Mm. Uh, yeah, it could be. Very well could yeah, be. probably so, because Bitcoin was reaching ATH. Monero is yeah. not reaching ATH. Um, right, but then yeah, people are using Monero mostly on shopping bit, and so that's that's interesting. It is interesting. Yeah. yeah, let's see the metrics in two months from now or so when it comes no. out. Um, then uh, somebody Monero General Fund. You can see. Yeah, it's beautiful to see somebody just making making a hundred hundred Monero donations. Wow. I think that's what it is. Yeah, uh, on the regular. We got some, yeah, we got yeah, some Monero whales out here. Uh, yeah, yeah. dropping Beautiful. a dropping a couple hundred XMR on the general fund. You know, just casually. You know, the, these dark market vendors that are like, oh, we got to keep this. <laughs> 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 I mean, Monero coming in from everywhere, right? Like people that are using it, benefiting from it, running their business, whatever it is they may be doing. Um, I would think they'd want to contribute back to the the development of the network itself, right? Improve the utility. So it's a beautiful system. Mm -hmm. Next thing, Bitcoin silent payments um, will work with BirdPay and Nostra too, only with Cake Wallet. So now if you're, um, if you don't know what silent payments are, uh, basically, let me go back here, actually. Um, there's no increase in transaction size or cost. And it's a way to mix the transactions with other Bitcoin transactions that cannot be distinguished. Uh, okay. this is so what, I can actually talk to this a little bit. Uh, silent yeah. payments is okay. a way to kind of allow yourself to put out a Bitcoin address yeah. and not have the fear of it being a single address. Because Bitcoin, typically, you every time you want to receive a transaction of Bitcoin, you, you want to make a new address to separate your funds. Uh, but with silent payments, you have one address and the sender can take that one address and derive new addresses on chain that only the receiver can spend from and identify that they are yours. So effectively, every time send someone sends you a transaction to your one address, your one silent payment address on chain, it looks like it's going to somebody else, which is sort of similar to how Stealth address. Um, stealth, yeah. Stealth addresses in Monero works. It's sort of similar to that. And right. it's not like covering all of Monero's privacy features, but it's just that one feature. Right. But that's something that right. we're added, adding, and no one else has done that yet. That's very cool. Very cool that you guys were the first to do that too, right? Like, ha that's amazing. I mean, obviously, Cake is a Bitcoin and Monero wallet. Monero wallet first, but amazing now that it's like you guys are beating uh bitcoin native native bitcoin wallets at developing bitcoin privacy tools <laughs> right at implementing the most private way to use bitcoin that's pretty pretty incredible that you, uh, mm -hmm. cake is on the cutting edge of that nice to see. Yep. so samurai doesn't use that no they use something else um they, they use, use something they use oh name right Payment, yeah right. Okay, it works okay. differently it's got some pros, some cons. I think silent payments ultimately is better. Uh, <gasps> Sam, Samurai people are listening right now, man. They're gonna hunt you down. <laughs> They're gonna call for your execution now. Well, the whole the whole way you use it in the <laughs> interface done. is better because it works exactly the same as Monero, where you just you don't have to you don't have to set up uh, like no, a pay name. You don't have to do all this extra stuff. Um, yeah. And then of course with pay names, there's an on chain transaction unless you integrate with their um it's like cahoots and then you can you can like collaborate with other people and avoid it there's like a lot of stuff going on but with silent payments it's a lot simpler and the one downside is that you do have to scan you have to do like local scanning like with monero to figure out which outputs belong to you but i think i think it's a, a worthy um it's a worthy thing i don't think the downside is like 
I think the pros outweigh the cons in this case. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Interesting. Very cool. Yeah, it's like stealth addresses. Very cool. Um, all right. Keep moving. Keep moving. Yeah, uh, this is actually the last thing. And uh, somebody, Frank, said in the comments, comment section, we bought Starling Internet Service for our business of XMR. Debit card through Cake Wallet. Proof point for you all. Wonderful. Cool. Cool. And um, then this thing. So buy on Amazon using Monero. What, what uh, this is, uh, what's, what are they called again? Monozone? Monozone. <laughs> yeah. So we got to get them to, you know, to jump up on stage one of these days. Tell us. I know we, I know we had them in the news in the past. If they ever want to come on. Mm -hmm. More than welcome. Yep. So uh, the way they work, you just drop in the link of the thing that you want to buy. And then they, they take care of it. Then you go on the website. The logo is, <laughs> they took the Amazon logo and they added the M. So it's kind of interesting. It. Uh, I love that. Yeah, you can see it here too. Shop on Amazon anonymously. So uh, you put in the link and then they take um, care, of, care of it for you. And then you can do priority tips as well, <laughs> which is cool. A uh, refund yeah, Monero address. Let's try this. We'll try this maybe for Monerotopia for some of the things we need to buy. Let me give that a shot. Mm -hmm. In the past, we've used coin cards for things like that. It's been great. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I have to give this a shot. Very cool. Yeah, and um, that was for this week for the new section. Uh, we have quite exciting stuff to talk about. Yeah, um, amazing. Man, Monero is not stagnating, people. It is freaking uh, fl sprinting right now. Uh, beautiful, beautiful to see, right? I think we saw Monero getting its price getting crushed, um, transaction count going through the roof, appearing to be a spam attack. So kind of Monero, Monero take, taking taking some heat, but turning that heat into uh, progress, right? Putting it towards progress. Amazing to see. Uh, so I think this this week was a great example of that, especially mm -hmm. with what Luke was talking about. So exciting stuff for Monero. Uh, 